the game of professional snooker has gone through some enormous changes. But during that quarter of a century, nothing can compare with a massive transformation in the game due to China's love affair with snooker. The rise of Chinese snooker increasingly influences every aspect of our sport. When Ding Junhui made his crucible debut in 2007, there were just five Chinese players in the top 100 on the professional tour. Five years later, that number has expanded to 10%, while the number of UK players has been reduced to 75%. Ding is still the biggest star in the Chinese firmament and the face of the game in his home country and abroad. But he is no longer a lone pioneer. No fewer than four Chinese players made it through qualifying to join Ding at the Crucible. Snooker is a meritocracy now, you know, it's entirely dependent on talent. Wherever you are from the world, you have your chance. And I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on the top players as well. You know, there's, no, there's going to be less and less protectionism for the top players. They've got to produce. That pressure was applied by Chao Yupeng, the only Chinese player to progress past the first round after a fractious match with Mark Allen. Um,战场马克·艾伦，艾伦刚刚从海口公开赛拿了一个冠军，当时还没有给他对战的时候，都感觉到非常紧张。但是这场比赛我赢了他，我感觉到非常开心，因为我打出了自己的水平，在克
is, is essential to have PTCs in China. So it's nice for um, all, all, all the Asian players and the Chinese players to have a chance to play in, in, in the homeland. But the players are having to get used to it. Five ranking tournaments in China next season, and the expansion is likely to continue. Well, I can't over express uh, how important China is uh, as a market for us. You know, we are um, next year going to have five ranking events in, uh, in the People's Republic of China. Um, we've expanded over the last five years from about 500,000 uh, pounds prize money to two and a quarter million. So obviously, extremely, uh, extremely important market. In 2007, the prize fund was dominated by UK money, with less than a quarter coming from overseas tournaments. But now the financial pendulum has swung to overseas currencies, with the Chinese yuan making up the majority share of the player's pot. Effectively, the prize money on the world snooker scene two years ago has now been matched just with the Chinese events on its own. So that's pretty dramatic for two years. So you've seen the CCTV event came in as the biggest event, bigger than, you know, as big as the UK Championships for their first one. If it does reward the sponsors with high viewing figures, which it, it looks as if it will do, I can only see one way, an uh, upward spiral. The change in TV viewer reach has been astonishing. The World Championship reached 84 million people in 2007. Five years later, the UK audience has remained static, but China has propelled overseas viewership beyond the 350 million mark. With 287 TV channels, 400 million TV sets, and an increasingly affluent society, television in China is experiencing the sort of boom that the US TV industry saw in the 1950s. And it is the appeal of televised snooker that is attracting sponsors to the table. Uh,怎么说呢,和高尔夫比,它的赛事的这种价值呢,不是很高,但是呢,在中国它的受众人群是最大的。所以这个呢,也是会是很多这种企业它所看重的。再加上现在呢,就是不管是电视网络平面,各
呃，这个我不好说，但是呢，中国现在这个政府也好，还有这个企业也好，他们是有这个实力可以让斯诺克世锦赛落户在中国的。当然了，只要沃特斯诺克愿意，呃，谢菲尔德愿意，都这是没有问题的。Well, I'm not silly enough to say that I don't have to look at alternatives, but the overall feeling for me and my, the remainder of my board is, we stay here if everyone wants us enough. The rise of Chinese snooker continues to have a huge influence in every aspect of our sport, and if their passion continues, then the future of our game lies far to the east of its traditional home. Yes, just on.